Ubuntu. This is an absolutely amazing desktop environment, one that led the charge, the ease and use and friendliness of Linux. There's so many great things that it's done since its inception in 2004 that we need to talk of why it declined, why people stopped using it, because it's kind of kind of crazy to think that one time 10 years ago, pretty much everyone used Ubuntu. So this is a pretty easy answer to get to, and let's just jump right in and launch, and maybe you can just see exactly what I'm talking about. We're launching Firefox. I clicked on it. It takes three to four seconds to launch, and this is a pretty beefy computer, so a 5600X, uh, you know, over 10 gigs of RAM allocated to this right now, it should just be instant. Like, when I'm on my regular desktop, and I flip over to here, and let's say I want to pull up Firefox on it, uh, let's just pull it up. It's pretty instantaneous. So what's going on there? Why is this spooling happening? Is it a problem with the core of Ubuntu or what? And the answer is very simple. This Firefox, which it should not take this long. Let's relaunch. Maybe it was just something to start up. No, still, still taking a couple seconds to launch. Why is it doing that? And it's because it's a snap. It's a snap pack. It's an all-inclusive universal package. This is a horrible experience. This is worse than Windows. It's worse than Mac. It's <laughs> it's worse than any Linux distribution. When I made the thumbnail, I said slow and pointless when it comes to describing Ubuntu. It's because everything has been put into a snap. You go to launch Thunderbird. There you go. A couple seconds on Thunderbird. I mean, there's very little things that they're not packaging into this horrible package manager. Let's just face it. This is the death of Ubuntu. Snaps. Unless they just completely reverse course and rip out snaps and completely abandon it, I see zero point of having an Ubuntu desktop. But uh, let's go a little bit further. Is this the worst thing Ubuntu's ever done to their desktop? And the answer is surprisingly no, it isn't. Back in, I think it was Ubuntu 14, they were basically reporting back all your search results to either sell as advertisements or just house in, in there for telemetry. There was a lot of uh, big hubbub in the Linux community at the time about Linux, uh, Ubuntu Linux doing this. It was, it was horrible. And then for several iterations, we had like an Amazon store here, which I think Amazon paid them money to be included on the desktop of Ubuntu Linux. So they're trying to obviously monetize somewhat and I think Snaps kind of falls right into that wheelhouse. You know, I don't think it's spyware by by any course of you know the imagination. But the Snap Store is a closed source store, meaning nobody else can open up a Snap Store anywhere else. No competing distribution, uh, much like you would with Apple's App Store or Microsoft's Microsoft Store. You know, those are closed source stores that are tightly controlled, and that is Snaps in Linux in general. So when someone says I don't have a problem with Snaps, I'm like yeah, okay, well, you probably don't have a problem with the App Store or the Microsoft Store, and that's fine. But at least the App Store and Microsoft Store, the apps actually have about native performance where snaps just do not. They're just bad. So what else has happened in Ubuntu? Like when we pull up stuff in here, I still like the interface. I love this Unity-esque experience, even though this is just GNOME, and some of these packages are a little bit wonky compared to a regular distribution. Uh, but overall, it's aesthetically pleasing, and I, I always enjoyed this setup, and I felt like their strengths have always been ease of use. It's just like they'd stopped caring about the user experience, and that just kind of drove me crazy, because this should be the king of all desktops, but it's not. When I just mentioned Unity and how this looks, that was a great invention of uh, Canonical and, and implemented in Ubuntu. It was a desktop environment, but they pretty much killed it off. They killed off Ubuntu 1. Uh, they, they, that was like a cloud services endeavor they did. They've had Mir, which was a competing display manager because a lot of display managers on Linux are a little bit wonky when it comes to like Xorg or Wayland. Well, they had Mirror and I thought that was kind of interesting, but that also uh, got killed off. Ubuntu Touch, their kind of mobile endeavors uh, when they were doing that. But again, that is killed off as well. So it, it feels like Canonical is a company without a purpose of having a Linux desktop anymore. And that's why it's declining. Because when I look at this desktop environment, while it's clean, it's functional, 
it could be so much better. And it's just not. You're better off with any other distribution as your desktop. And it's not to say I would never use uh, Ubuntu. I'm just, I would never use Ubuntu desktop. Like Ubuntu server, when you load it up for the first time and you come into here, usually the first thing I do is just go into SnapD and rip it out. I would just do purge. And then I would do is just like snap D and then kill it. And then I just remove all of snaps from the system. And then I do an app hold of snap D and then continue on building my system on an Ubuntu server base where it doesn't have all this slowdowns, all this garbage doesn't install Firefox through a snap package or any of that. You just, you don't run into it. I, I just wanted to install the stock Ubuntu experience and just say, Canonical is fine, but you got to realize this is totally a server business-based company now. They don't care about their desktop and it shows. It's slow. It's pointless. And that's really why I made this video was just kind of say like this, can they turn it around? What's the future like? Like is probably the, the last thing I want to leave you with. And if they continue down this path, forcing snaps on their users, well, Linux users have options. They have tons of of options, more options than they know what to deal with. And Ubuntu just will not be one of those options. They will just simply install another distro and that'll be fine. But they could also reverse course. Like I said, the foundation, the base, I see that this could be a really, really good operating system. And it could be a fantastic Linux distribution like it once was. But they actually need to start listening to somebody. They actually need to start using their desktop environment because I think they're all programmers on like Windows and Mac machines up in Canonical. And I don't think they actually use it because if you start using this, it's not a good experience. It's slow. It feels bad. It's pointless. So that's where I'm going to leave this one. Kind of a short video, but I thought compelled to do an article and a little YouTube video follow up on this one because it's been a while since I bashed old Ubuntu and I think it was a well overdue. I hope they pull out of this. I know a lot of people, you know, think I think it's the devil, so to speak, but I really do hope that Canonical finds its ways and restores Ubuntu to its maybe somewhat of a former of its uh uh, former former glory, but time will tell. And with that, let me know your thoughts of old Ubuntu down in the comment section, and I'll see you in the next one.